Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by today. Um, if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you never miss a new upload. Today I have the Caran d'Ache Pablo colored pencil set. This is the 120 set. Um, I purchased this on Amazon yesterday. It came yesterday, but it was the free same day shipping. So it came kind of late and, and I wasn't really feeling like filming a video at that late at night. So I have them here. The reason I went with this, this set instead of the luminance set, cause I was in between the two is because these are supposed to be oil based colored pencils, but we'll talk about that later. And I only have one oil based set, which is my polychromos. It came in this box, but this box came in another big box. Um, so I was appreciative of this because it kind of helped protect the pencils a little bit more. And so we'll open it up and take a look. There's like a cardboard insert right here. I don't know if they all come like this or if mine just came like that or what, but, and we'll pull them out. Ooh, they're, they're heavy. All right, let's get this box out of the way so we can check out these pencils seed all of this is in a different language oh right here there is something in english right here um entirely designed to and produced in our workshops in geneva in accordance with the highest quality requirements of the swiss made label pablo permanent colored pencils are ideal for both amateur and experienced artists looking for a versatile artistic pencil that can be used for a wide range of creative text techniques uh, from illustrations to realistic drawings. So it says water resistant pencil, dry lead, which does not create dust, excellent light fastness, 120 bright and opaque colors, no blooming, high concentration of extra fine pigments, also available individually. So that kind of covers everything I was going to talk about in my video. <laughs> um, soft and resistant 3.8 millimeter wax lead, hexagonal shape prevents pencils from rolling, premium F FSC certified cedar wood, water-based ecological varnish. So I'm a little confused because these are, I believe, like marketed as an oil-based pencil, but then on the back it says wax. Lead. So I did do some research before I decided to do uh, a video on these pencils. There's a lot of controversy as to whether or not they're wax-based or oil-based. Um, so when I was looking them up, I found an article by the Art Gear Guide. I'm sure most of you on YouTube are familiar with him and his reviews. So his article states, he contacted Karandash. They stated that the Pablo is indeed an oil-based pencil. So basically all colored pencils are oil and wax. It's a combination of both. So it just depends on which, which one it has more of. Like if it has more oil, then it's an oil-based pencil. And if it has more wax, then it's a wax-based pencil. So let's go ahead and open them up. I don't want to ruin the tin. I usually buy like pencil cases for my pencils but i don't know that i'm gonna buy one for these i can smell the wood already it's amazing i love it so they come in this tin here let's open it on up it's a hinged lid um there's some information here some stickers it looks like i don't know what these are for if anyone knows what these are for please let me know but yeah they're stickers they're printed in white so it looks like all of the it's all of the karandash products um we got this layer of i wouldn't i don't know is it foam it's foam we'll call it foam and here is the first layer of pencils so the thing that's interesting about these pencils um that other brands don't tend to do is that it's a plastic tray inside of a metal tray which is really nice which is also why um, I wouldn't buy a case for them because I feel like this protects them pretty well. So we got our second layer. It's got some little plastic tabs here to lift this one out. 
And then this one doesn't have any tabs. We got another layer of foam. Um, this one doesn't have any tabs and there's no way I'm gonna get these out without spilling these pencils all over the place. It looks like a really nice range of colors. That's really exciting. We'll take one out and take a look at it. This is like my favorite color, so we'll use this one. My camera is being silly and doesn't want to focus. And it's hard to read because these are in gold. Um, so anyway, you have your 3.8 millimeter core. This is also different from other pencils in that it has a hexagon shape versus like a round. If you're familiar with Black Widows, it's like the same shape of that. Um, right here we have, it just says permanent color, um, Pablo, Carandash, Swiss made, gold band at the end, and it's got a colored cap on the end as well. And on the other side, we have a barcode because you can buy these open stock. I believe you can get them at Blick. And then you have the color name, this one is turquoise green and a color number. These are also light fast. So at the end here on all the pencils, you'll see um, stars. This one has two. So that indicates the light fast rating. Some of them I'm sure have more. I feel like the lighter colors might be not as light fast. Yeah, so this darker green or darker green. Oh my gosh. This darker blue has um, three stars. These are thinner than um, a polychromos. So probably, I want to say maybe a little bit thicker than a Black Widow. So before I swatch, I'm actually going to sharpen all these pencils. Um, I'm going to use my Doll 133 sharpener. Uh, I can link that in the description. I'll tell you guys how they sharpen. Um, and then we'll get into swatching. So, okay, so I got them all sharpened. Um, again, I used my Doll 133 sharpener, this one right here. Um, I love this sharpener. It is just the best. Um, I did take the black one and I put it aside because I wanted to try one of my different pencil sharpeners with these pencils. So I, for the black one, I used my Teagall sharpener. Um, I just wanted to see how they would sharpen in there. I wasn't sure with the hexagon shape if I would be able to sharpen them in there. So I did sharpen this one in there. It did not get um, like as good of a point as the doll made. So you can see the difference here. The white one I sharpened in the doll. They, like I said, they did pretty well in that doll sharpener. There wasn't a lot of like wood dust it didn't eat up my pencils so that was a plus now that i have them all sharpened i am gonna do my swatches so stick around for that and then after that i will do a couple of tests um i have a sheet here just a little mini sheet that i use to test my pencils on um so we will test layers pressure like how well the pencil performs under light, medium, and heavy pressure, the blendability of these pencils, erasability, whether or not they smear, and what the white pencil looks like on black. So I will be back after I'm done swatching.
Okay, I got them all swatched out. They did pretty well. I noticed when I was swatching that some of the names that I had typed in were actually wrong, but the color numbers match. So I just used the the color number numbers as a reference, but it looks like we got a really good range of colors. These are in a different order than like your typical colored pencil set, I feel. I feel like most pencil st sets start off with yellow and then go to orange and then red and then usually the purples, the blues, and then the greens. So I don't know if I'm gonna maybe redo the swatch sheet, um, just cause it does kind of bother me that it's not in the same order as all of my other pencil sets. But I'll zoom you guys in so we can kind of take a closer look at these colors. Okay, so we have um, like our reds, which I don't really see like a true red, but also, I didn't layer these pencils when I was swatching them just because it would be pretty time consuming to layer them. I feel like the colors might be a little bit more muted than what you can actually get. But actually, now that I'm looking down here at this scarlet, that might be more of a true red. Um, we got some pinks and some purples and I really like the blues in this set. The turquoise colors, like the blue-green colors are really nice. And then there's some more blue-green colors down here. Uh, we have a nice range of greens and we have some bright greens also. And then down here, some brown greens. So I think the color selection is really good. I don't think I'm gonna have trouble finding a color to use. You know, like if I'm looking for a specific color. Uh, we do have some metallics down here. We have gold, bronze, and silver. So, I mean, I don't really use metallic pencils very much, but some people might. Um, as far as browns, it doesn't look like we have a whole lot of browns. So you can see right here, we've got this row and then these three down here. Okay, so now that we've gone over all the colors, we can get into testing the pencils. Okay, so I have my test sheet. I haven't decided which colors I'm going to use yet. We'll do purple. So I'm going to do mauve, periwinkle blue, and violet for the blend test. All right, and then we'll test the layers first. And I'll speed this part up so that you guys don't get bored with me. Okay, so we did our layers and you can definitely see there's a huge difference between one and six. If you were to do four layers, that's pretty good with these pencils, but five and six, I, I like five and six better. So just because it gets into the tooth of the paper a little bit more and yeah. So now we will go ahead and do, put the, these pencils under some pressure. So I'm gonna actually use my mid-tone just because I don't want to use up all of my pencil, my mauve. So let's see how well they do under light pressure. So they do really well under light pressure. No dust was created with light pressure. So let's go ahead and see how they do under medium pressure. And not too bad with the dust that's been created. I don't know if you can see or not, but there is just a little bit of dust right here on the end. So let's see about heavy pressure. So 
So we got a lot more dust with the heavy pressure. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little bit more dust with, with heavy pressure. I actually am impressed with the way that these performed under heavy pressure because I did sharpen them to a pretty uh, fine point and I thought there was going to be some breakage but I don't see any so that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and see how they blend. So I'm going to blend these as if I would blend as if I was blending a polychromos just because I do feel that the lead is a little bit harder and would blend better with layers. So I'm going to go in with my base layer of my lightest color, which is mauve. Now I'm going in with my darkest color, which is violet. Okay, and I will now go in with my medium color, which is periwinkle blue. And I'll go back in with my lightest color, which is mauve. And I'll go back in with my darkest color again for some extra layers. My medium color again. and my lightest. All right, so I finished the blending. I feel like it looks pretty good. The transition between the medium and the light is a little, it's a little rough, but I think if I took my time a little bit more, it would look better. When and if I do like a more in-depth review of these pencils, I will definitely talk about blendability because I feel like after using them for a little while, I would be able to tell if they're easy enough to blend with layers or not. So now let's test the erasability. And I'm going to tell you a sad, sad story about my eraser. Yesterday, I had a couple of coloring things in my hands that I was taking from the dining room table to um, my coloring room and I had my Derwent electric eraser in my hand and it fell it fell out of my hand fell right to the ground and it just shattered so it's like all the pieces that were inside the batteries were everywhere the battery cover was on the ground, not connected to the eraser anymore. So I did my best to try and put it back together. Um, I was unsuccessful and now I don't have an electric eraser anymore. So I've still, so I, still, I have it here, but um, I'm still going to use it in the video, but it doesn't like the push button doesn't work anymore. So I was pretty bummed about that. I dropped it and said some naughty words and yeah. So I will be using this today without the electric function, unfortunately. So until I get a new one. All right, so we'll see if these can erase. And to be honest, I don't expect these to erase because they are an oil-based pencil and usually um, oil-based pencils don't erase very well. So we'll just see what happens. Um, my darkest color, I'm going to do like a light layer up here and then maybe some more pressure down here. Go in with my medium color, light layers up here and more pressure down here and then my lightest color. Got to erase by hand now. <laughs> I can't. 
can't use the electric function. I wonder if I can try and fix it better, but we'll see. All right, now, I, I mean, I don't know if this is the most accurate test because I can't get my little push button to work on here. Anyway, um, so erasability. It doesn't erase very well, which I didn't expect it to. The lighter pressure ones seem to erase better than the ones where I apply more pressure on. Um, but again, I don't know if this is if this can be deemed as accurate because if you are using an electric race eraser that actually works, you might have better luck erasing them. So now I'm gonna do a smear test. And since I will be working with these pencils in light layers, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do light layers. So that one didn't smear at all. That one didn't smear either. That one smeared a little bit, oh, just slightly smeared. You can barely even tell, but it did smear a little bit. So now I'm gonna test the white pencil on black. So I think that looks pretty good right here. I used heavier pressure. So I feel like you can see the white a little bit better when you use heavy pressure. This is with light pressure. If you layer it, so when you layer it, you do get a little bit more color payoff with the white on the black. You can see the difference between the layers and I guess just align with light pressure. Now that we went through the tests and swatched and sharpened, I can tell you what I think of the pencils. I really like them. I like them a lot. I don't regret um, purchasing them at all. I'm looking forward to working with them on a coloring page. I absolutely adore the colors. A lot of people compare these pencils to the Polychromos, which I can see. I do believe that the harder lead makes it comparable to a Polychromos colored pencil. Based on my tests and based on the blendability and the way that the pencil goes down on paper, I do think that they are more of an oil-based pencil than a wax-based pencil. When I was blending them and when I was layering them, they didn't create any type of wax bloom at all, which you would typically see with a wax colored pencil. I would love to do a comparison video on these pencils versus polychromos. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to make that happen. Also, one thing worth mentioning with these pencils is that the sleeve that comes on the outside of the tin is actually, I didn't notice this earlier, but it's actually a color chart. So it came over the pencils like this. And this is where the the swatch chart is on the inside and you can actually cut this part right here i already cut this part but you can cut this part right here and actually you can lay it inside the cover So you can actually lay it inside here and then that way you have a color chart for your pencils which is really nice i feel like most companies don't include that and i think i figured out what these stickers are for so let me get all this stuff out of the way so i think the stickers like if you have your box set in like a shelf or something you can put the sticker on the outside so that you can determine in which set it is so here we have the pablo one so you can just stick it like on the side right here and then that way you know which pencil set you're going for um so there isn't a sticker for the luminance in here 
So I don't know if maybe the Luminance come with their own sticker, um, but there is a sticker for the Neo Color 2, New Neo Color 1, and, and the brush pens. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you never miss a new upload. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.